One, two, three. Hello, and welcome to Friday's Cup to Hook conversation number 13. I hope you are all doing well. And so what's up? What's happened this past week since we last were together? Well, for me, as you can see, my background is the same, but it's closer. And that's because um, in spite of it being my busy week at work, I have managed to kind of rearrange my little craft studio nook a little bit. And so I promise next week I will give you a full shot of my little space and let you see where I spend my time. Um, and the reason I'm not doing it now is because next week it will kind of pertain to the question of the week. So, got to tune in for that. All right. So, what is up this past week? Um, well, we have Memorial Day and um, on the 25th of May, that was. And I just wanted to kind of do a little shout out in lieu of that. Um, Vicki shared that her husband was a veteran of the Vietnam War. So I wanted to take a few moments and thank him for his service and anyone who has served in the military or is still currently serving in the military. We definitely thank you every day, not just Memorial Day, but every day for your service and your commitment and your sacrifice. And so, um, also this week, um, or this past week, since I last saw y'all, my husband and I got to spend Saturday with some friends of mine that I have known for a very, very long time. And they were really, really good friends of ours when um, I lived in Mississippi. And their children and my children grew up together. But it has been 15 years since we'd seen each other. So it had been a while. And so it was really, really fun and exciting to get to see them and to see some of the kids. And they're now adults. And so, um, yeah, it was real exciting. And then one of them, Kim, um, is interested in learning how to crochet. So she and I got to spend some time um, kind of just doing some basic things. And so I'm very excited that she is um, passionate about learning how to crochet. And so Kim, if you're watching this, I wish you lots of luck. Keep watching my tutorials. And if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. And I will do my best to answer them. So I'm excited to have her along on this journey with us. And so um, I'm just excited when I hear someone who's just freshly new to crocheting or knitting because um, that enthusiasm is really um, new and fresh. But in the same token, it also makes it very easy to get frustrated when you're uncertain of things. And so my greatest advice is just take a deep breath and take your time because it's meant to be fun and relaxing. And yes, it does take time to learn the techniques and learn how to do things. It is a process, but take it at your pace. There is no right or wrong and there's no rush to get somewhere with it. So let it be a project that is enjoyable for you. So let it be a process that's about learning and just going along for the adventure. So wishing you the best, Kim, and hope to um, have you a part of this a whole lot more than just today. So, all right. So let me know what's going on new with you. I know Vicki is back home and she's getting settled back in after being at her daughter's in New York for quite a long time. So she's got a lot on her plate just trying to kind of 
get things caught up there at home. So hope that's continuing to come together for you. And then um, also just wanted to kind of mention Dora Beth from that Yarnery Zebra. I know that she has been having some severe back pain. And just because this is my busy week at work, I haven't been able to get on YouTube as much as I normally do. So I haven't been able to find or, or know of an update on her yet. So if anyone knows, or Dora, if you'll just let us know how you're feeling and how you're doing and how's your back. Because it broke my heart to see you that day just laying on the couch um, crocheting. But you guys, let me tell you about this wonderful, fabulous woman. Even though she's in so much back pain and in so much pain, she just sings. And she sings to the Lord. And... I know he hears her. She has not only a beautiful voice, but the heart that it comes from just makes it even that much sweeter. So again, if you have not plugged in and met Dora Beth on that Yarnery Zebra, you really, really need to. She is an amazing woman and a God-fearing woman. So I love you, Dora Beth. I hope you're feeling better. All right. So, what is in your cup? Well, I am not going to lie to y'all. Today in my cup is coffee. Um, I've already been drinking some, to be honest. It is French vanilla cappuccino. And last week, Vicki was drinking coffee. So, thank you for sharing that, Vicki. But as I started to say, I just got off of a 12 and a half hour shift. I am totally exhausted. I have been awake now for almost 20 hours. And as soon as I finish this video and it's processing, I'm hoping to get a small nap, but I don't know how successful that will be because I actually have a hair appointment today, which I desperately, desperately need. So I am trying my best to stay awake <laughs> and to be enthusiastic for you guys. But I'm not going to lie. I'm tired. And this coffee, oh my goodness, is good, but it's fuel. It's fuel today. So let me know what's in your cup. All right. And what are your busy hooks up to? What have you been doing? So what's going on with your hooks? I want to know. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, I know Vicki told me that she hasn't really been working on much because she's again trying to get settled back at home. And I know Pamela's been very busy doing some different things. But um, let me know. What are you doing? So, on my hook, let's talk about my personal projects first and then we'll go into tutorials. On my personal hook, the only thing that I have been able to work on this week um, is my son's hoodie and so I'm very happy about that because I do want to continue getting those done and it had been a while since I really worked on it I know last week I shared where I started the sleeve but I actually finished the sleeve so <laughs> there's a sleeve if you can see it there we go so that one sleeve is ready to go and I am getting ready to start the second sleeve but I also managed to get the front pocket for his hoodie done. So I like that. And I did it in a dark charcoal gray. And then I took some of that variegated gray that this is all one skein. One, you know, this is a variegated color of grays. And so I just took some of that light gray. Um, which was next on the skein and just kind of, you know, accented the front of his pot or the edges of his pocket with it. So that's going to be really pretty. And if you can imagine, because his hoodie is done in the same color, so let's just pretend that this is the hoodie and that's going to be the pocket sitting up against it. So that's going to be really pretty. I really like that. So, 
And my husband jokingly said that if he doesn't like it, doesn't want it, he will gladly take it off of his hands. But hopefully that's not the case. And I'll just make my husband another one. So that is all I have been able to accomplish on my personal whips. Um, <clears throat> I'm truly hoping that um, by next week, since it'll be my short week, I will have more done on the Elvis blanket. I know I said that I would have some done and be able to show you, but unfortunately that did not happen. But um, I'm trust me, I'm excited about working on it. So um, hopefully next week we'll have more progress on that. And so Funday Monday we did a hat that was called the DS Coop hat. And I titled it that because when I created the pattern, not the stitches, but the pattern combo, um, meaning, I'm so tired, sorry. I did not create the stitches, but the layout of the pattern I did. And I called it DS Coop because it used double crochet and single crochet in the same stitch. Um, as if it were coupled together. And so that's where I get D for double crochet, S for single crochet, and coop is just couple without the L. So anyway, the original hat that I made for that was this one here. And then I can't honestly remember which one I did for the tutorial. But I also made both of these using the same pattern, but just, you know, mixing it up a little bit. Now this one here is all one skein. It was a variegated skein that came out like that. It was really pretty. And then this one is the same pattern, but I just created little stripes just using the same pattern. But this hat, everybody fell in love with. Everybody loved this. This was their favorite. And I have to admit, it, it is one of mine too. And I love that pom-pom. That pom-pom is just so cute. So, so that was what was on my hook. And then also Wednesday, we started the baby sweater. And I'm just going to show you that real quick. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later. But this is the start of the baby sweater. There we go. And if I fold it up, it kind of starts to look like that. But we'll talk about that more in just a little bit. So that is what was on my hook this past week. And let's see. Inquiring hooks want to know what questions did I get this week? Um, I did get a question and it came off of the Fun Day Monday video with the hats. And so I'm actually going to hold and wait and discuss that question when we get to the Fun Day Monday topics. All right. But other than that, I did not have any other questions. So, um, well, before we go into that, I do want to do this little shout out and thank you. I was keeping notes and then I got to thinking, and I had kind of quit talking about this on the videos because I was like, well, I'll just keep it in my notes and keep it for my own personal knowledge. But the more I thought about it, over time I would end up having all these papers stacked up um, that I keep my notes on for the videos and I don't want to end up with boxes and boxes of papers and notes so I thought if I have the video then I can always resort back to the video but if I'm not putting the information in the video then I wouldn't have it and I would like to be able to kind of track my record so I'm referring to the part where I call um, how's the view from here and I kind of took it out of the Friday conversations because 
I didn't want you to think that I am focused on, you know, the progress of my YouTube channel. But on the same token, it is important, you know, because I do want you to be a part of the growth and I want you to know that the growth is because of you and that I do appreciate it. And while I'm not focused on it, you know, I do have goals. And so June 4th, which was yesterday, um, actually marked my three month anniversary being on YouTube. And I wanted to count up and see how many videos I had, especially after this past week. We had a palooza of videos and we'll go over those in a minute. But, um, so in three months time, I have had 1,207 views on my channel and I'm very proud of that. And I thank you guys that you're supporting me that way. Um, over the past week, that was a growth increase of 142 views. I think that is phenomenal. And again, I just, I thank you so much. We've had five new subscribers this past week. We went from 40 to 45. So I'm so excited to welcome um, those new subscribers. And if your YouTube channel is public, then I'll be able to do a shout out for you during our love share. But if it is not, thank you so much for choosing to subscribe to my channel and being a part of this wonderful journey with all of us. And this past week, um, we had 12 and a half additional watch hours. So we're at 99.8 watch hours right now. So thank you so much for all of your love and your support. All right, so now let's move on to cup to hook conversations that happen every Friday. And every Friday we're moving closer and closer to going to live feed. So I'm excited and a little nervous about that, but you know what? I'm hanging out with friends and so um, all those butterflies will go away. So. so last week our question was, what color of yarn do you find yourself buying often? And I did get some responses on that. And let's see. I know Pamela from Adoring Crochet said she tends to get a lot of blues and greens, but she loves all colors. And I thought somebody else... Oh, they did. Um, Miss Joanne, I believe you said something on Facebook. And I apologize. I did not write that response down. But if you haven't had a chance to answer the question, you still have time and we can talk about it next Friday. So, let's see. Over the past week, I have put out several videos. Um, there was, let's see, the Fun Day Monday, a party in a hat, and on that hat, when I did the stitch, I did what I called um, a double crochet decrease, but I did it different from what is a standard normal double crochet decrease. So, and I emphasize that in the video, that it was not the correct way to do it. It was the way that I chose to do it for this hat pattern. So, I then also went out and actually put out a tutorial teaching the proper way to do a double crochet decrease. And Vicki kind of made fun of me and said she's glad she saw the proper way first. And so, anyway, um, yes. I hope that that has been helpful for many people. And that's where the question for the week came in is, when reading a pattern, does DC stand for uh, double crochet or does it stand for double crochet decrease? And DC stands for double crochet. If something is a decrease, whether it's a single crochet, um, half double crochet, double crochet, it will normally say, you know, 
double crochet two together, single crochet two together, and that just means that you create that double crochet over the two stitches or that single crochet over two stitches. But anyway, so those are two videos that went out, the Fun Day Monday um, Party in a Hat and the Double Crochet Decrease tutorial on the correct way to do it. I also had a tutorial go out on the magic ring because with some of these hats we're using the magic ring quite a bit and there were some folks that were kind of struggling with that or felt like they couldn't master it and so I wanted to put some options out there of different ways to do it but even after that if it's still not something that you're comfortable with you can always do a chain and join the chain or you can you know um, chain two stitches and then do all of your stitches in that second chain from the hook so um, or chain four join it with a slip stitch and create your ring that way so whichever way you feel comfortable but there was a video out on the magic ring and I had several people really thank me for that because they felt like it was something that was going to be hard and with the tutorial they felt like that um, it was actually a lot easier than they expected so so I hope that you are successful when trying to do the magic ring now and of course Wednesday on the hook we did our sweater and I do want to apologize because we did not go as far as I had initially intended for the first video on the sweater but I wanted to get something out there. This had, has been a crazy, crazy week, and um, my time has just been absorbed a lot more um, than normal with work and, you know, resting and renovations, and so I didn't get as much done as I wanted, and I apologize to y'all that we didn't get as far as I'd like, but we are still going to finish the sweater at, without it being so overwhelming as far as a lot to do um, this coming Wednesday. So I hope you'll tune in for that. But I do apologize that we did not get any further than the body of the sweater. I was hoping to get the body of the sweater done and what they call the yoke, which is the, you know, like front portion and the shoulder portion of the sweater. But we're going to get that done with the sleeves and the edging and get it all together. So, let's see. And then I put out the video on the pom-poms since we're doing all these hats. I wanted to make sure that everyone knew how they could make pom-poms to add to their hat. And coming up in some of the future videos, I have some of those fuzzy pom-poms that um, I'm going to use and also show... Um, everyone how to attach them to your hats so I'm looking forward to that that will not be this Monday but that will be in next Monday's hats and then I did a video um, a special delivery which my son the Marine had called me and he's like mom and I said yes well, actually he calls me mommy he's like mommy and, and I love that. Uh, I will cherish that for as long as he'll call me that. But um, he's like, yeah, we were at Chow one night and they gave us cornbread and it was awful. And so I kind of was telling all the guys about your cornbread. And so I was wanting to know if you would make cornbread for me and four other Marines. And I was like, sure. And I hung up the phone and I looked at my husband. I'm like, how am I supposed to make cornbread and send it through the mail? Well, if you watch my video, A Special Delivery, it not only shows the cornbread being baked in the oven, but it shows how we did wrap them, how we sent them in Lether Co. boxes within another box. But um, I don't know if you remember me talking about, you know, how it's kind of sad that I'm not able to reuse my Lether Co. boxes as gift boxes because the labels are on them and they get kind of, you know, knocked around and messed up a little bit in delivery because the box is delivered as the box. Well, how perfect those boxes were for that cornbread. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was a lot of fun to make and it was a lot of fun to do. 
and I was hoping to have a response for you about um, the cornbread and how it came out with my son, but I talked to him about 11 o'clock last night, um, and he was not able to go down to the main office and get that box. It did arrive at Fort Leonard Wood at 1215, as a matter of fact, yesterday afternoon, but he was not able. He had field duty or field something going on. I don't have my phone right here. Um, so he was not able to get away, but he does have some leave time this weekend. So he said definitely this afternoon he'll get it. So I will update you next Friday on the result of the cornbread and the special delivery. And then I did a video on Method to My Madness. So I got to go to Michael's this past week. Um, actually, it was the beginning of last weekend. I was able to go. And I got some yarn and I went over that in that video. And so I met this young lady in Michael's and I Again, I don't know her name, and if you're watching this, please give a shout out for your name um, so we can properly say hello to you. Especially since you have inspired me to do um, a set of videos. But in that video, I said there was a method to my madness. And you had to watch the end of the video to catch it. And I hope you stuck with it. But just in case you didn't, I hope you stick with this video. But part of what it was, was introducing to you the method of what I do to each skein of yarn that I get. And as you can tell, this one has an M on it. And that means that I got it from Michaels. Then you see two prices on it. And that means when it says $9.99, that's how much this skein would normally be at Michael's. But I got it for $5.59 on April the 20th of this year. So that's what 4, or 420 stands for April of 2020. And for example, this one here, I also got from Michael's. It normally is $9.99. I got it for $2.97 also in April of 2020. And just to give you an idea, here's another one that I got from Joann's. And I got it, or it's normally $7.99, and I got it for $5.99. And so I have just started within the last year, um, about, I don't know, eight, ten months ago started even putting my, you know, this information on my labels. I was just keeping all my receipts. But now I am listing the store. I'm listing what the price would have been, what I paid, and I'm trying to put the date on there. So I think I have, no, I don't. Well, here's one. Okay. So for example, Here's one I got from Michaels, and this is one I got the other day that was in that video, and I got it on May 28th. It would normally be $9.99, and I got it for $4.99. So that way, whenever I go to, to use the yarn, I know when I bought it, where I got it from, how much I paid for it. So if I run out and I'm in a project still, I know where I can go to try and find it and approximately what I paid for it. And even if it's not on sale, I know what to expect as far as what the price may be for that particular type or skein of yarn. So I hope that's helpful for you. And so this young lady, when we were talking, you know, we were just talking about our crochet journeys. And she asked me what my favorite kind of yarn was. And she asked me if I was looking for something specific, if I had a project in mind. And that's when I told her no, that I'm just kind of shopping to see, you know, what's available. If there's anything new, if there's anything on sale that I can stock up on. Told her about my YouTube channel right there in Michaels. She actually subscribed to my YouTube channel. So 
whoever you are, my new friend, thank you for your um, subscribing and your support. I hope that my channel will be an encouragement to you and that it'll be something that will be helpful and just give you a place where you feel like you belong and can just hang out with other people who share the same passion. But in those questions she asked me, it got me thinking, you know, well, what is my favorite yarn? Well, let's do an inventory. And so I thought, well, why not do this yarn wall voyage and we'll just go through each of my little shelves to see what is on them. And now that we're up closer to them, you can see them a little bit better, but there is a division for them. You know, I try to do my acrylics over here, my baby yarn behind me, and my cotton yarns, my fingering weight yarns, more cotton, and then a lot of my cakes are over there. The shelves directly behind me, right here, these shelves on this row were supposed to house my whips that I'm working on, but I have bought so much yarn, um, <laughs> I had to have a place to put them. So my goal is to get back down to where my whips are in the middle section here. So all I got to do is just pull it out, work on it, put it back until it's done. So, so that was our array of videos this past week. And um, some of the comments I got on some of them was the magic ring was easier than they thought it would be. On the special delivery, they were telling me that my son was not going to be eating that cornbread by himself. And no, he's not. And I know that. And I'm sure there may be even more than the other four Marines that he was originally talking about. But we sent eight little cakes of cornbread. So hopefully they'll share. And hopefully it's still fresh. Um, oh, somebody asked me about my basket. That was in the yarn wall voyage video. They're like, where did I get that basket? And so this is the basket that they are referring to. I absolutely love the big thick baskets like this. And so I actually got this one from Goodwill. And the day that I used it for that video, I had just bought it like, I think a day or two days before that video. So I haven't even taken the price tag off of it yet from Goodwill, but I paid $3.99 for this basket. And I was just like, what? <laughs> so um, yes, to me, this was a wonderful, wonderful bargain and purchase. I love big, thick baskets. And in fact, um, I'm gonna see if I can turn you around a minute. You can see part of my messy craft room, but there's another one down there, and that's the one that I actually keep all the yarn in for the whips that I'm working on, the extra skeins when I'm not, you know, needing them until I finish the skein that's in the individual little bags that I keep it in. That's what I keep that yarn in. So I love those big thick baskets. So. So yes, and that one over there that I just showed you, I actually think I got that one for like $5.99, but it was at a Goodwill too. And so I was excited about the $5.99, but yeah, I was thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to get this one for $3.99. So that was a definitely good spend of my money, but I love, I love baskets in general. And so but I, I do love those very thick, thick baskets. So good question. Thank you for asking. And I think that about, oh, Vicki told me um, when it comes to um, the, like I had shown some of this in one of my videos on the Method to My Madness, the Karen One Pound, and she was telling me how she likes to get the mills in. And I've never, gotten that yarn before. I've never tried that yarn before. So I did Google it and Vicki correct me if I'm wrong, but when I Googled it, it said that um, <coughs> it, it brought up Hirschner. So um, I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about that yarn. 
So that's definitely something I'll have to look into. I know eventually, um, after listening to um, Krista at the Secret Yarnery, I know she loves ice yarns. And I have heard Creative Grandma, and I have heard Glenda, Creative Grandma, and I have heard um, Crystal with Bag of Day talk a lot about ice yarns. So instead of going to Michael's the next time, I think I might splurge a little bit and try the ice yarns a little bit. Um, I have kind of browsed through their site, and oh my gosh, they do have some pretty yarns. So. so if you have bought ice yarns in the past, then please give me feedback. Tell me your favorite um, type of yarn with ice yarns, um, some that you've maybe worked with, but give me some feedback on that so that definitely in the future when I get ready to make my order that um, I can take a look at some of the yarns that you've recommended. All right, so that finishes up our cozy chats for the week from all of our videos and our question from last week. So our big question for this week, dun 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 dun, is do you choose the yarn or the project first? So in other words, when you go to get yarn, do you have a project in mind and you're like, okay, so this is what I want to do and now I'm going to try and find the yarn for it. Or do you find the yarn and then decide the project? So for me, most of the time, I joke and I say that the yarn finds me. <laughs> so for example, one day I was in Joann's and I came across this Baja Blue is what it's called. And I've really become a big, big lover of variegated yarn. But this is by the same family as this gray yarn that I'm making my son's um, hoodie in. And so I love the way those grays... I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm so tired. Um, I love the way they flow together. And so I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be so pretty. Well, at Joann's, even though, um, I had some of this because it's cream. And again, I think it's yellow. To me, it looks yellow, but it's not. They say cream. They call it cream. But I thought, oh my gosh, how pretty this would be together. And so I got enough of this to actually kind of make for me, um, which is something I've never done. The only thing I have ever made for me in the crochet um, is dishcloths. That's it. That's all I've ever made for me. Everything else I have made and given away or have sold um, but most of my stuff I've given away has been gifts so I decided I was going to make me a little lap blanket that I could put over my lap because I'm always cold um, when I'm sitting in the living room watching TV with the family and crocheting so I was real excited about that however and so the yarn found me and then I thought, I really like those colors. They're very warm and inviting. Our color scheme and our color walls are light blue. Um, as you can see, that light blue is the color that we're putting kind of throughout the house. And so I thought, wow, that would really even go well. Well, now... <laughs> And, and those yarns were all on sale. But then I was in Michael's not too long ago, and I found these skeins on sale for $2.97. And purple's my favorite color. 
And this is so soft. It's that velvety baby crush velvet. And so all of these were on sale. Let me see if I can hold these up. And so I thought, oh no, this is the blanket that I want to do for me. <laughs> so these are the colors that I'm going to put in my blanket. So now, again, I have this yarn. Now I can still make me a blanket. It's not like I couldn't have a blanket because I have a couch here in my studio. It's not like I couldn't have one here for me and one in the living room. Um, but I'm thinking now, and I'm not 100% sure, I may still do a lap gam, but I may take this and use this yarn to make the baskets that I want to create in 2020. And then I can use these baskets in my studio. So we'll see. But anyway, so these colors, um, this is a violet. And of course, these are all 100% polyester. And then this one is called Snowy White. And this one is my favorite. There's that word. I don't like to use my fave. I'll call it my fave. And it's Hydrangea Petals. And then this one, I only found one skein of. So it's going to kind of be like maybe a little accent color here and there. But it's just called Lavender. But anyway, so for me, I guess more than anything, um, I pick the yarn and then the project. I have another set of yarn that I will eventually be showing you because um, it's in the first row. It's on the bottom. But it's a brown, bulky weight yarn that I got at Walmart, and I paid almost nothing for those skeins. And so originally when I got it, um, I thought, well, I'll just make a small blanket out of it and then maybe I'll make it for the dog. And this was before my son's dog came to live with us. Well, the more I got to thinking about it, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll make baskets out of it since it's a bulky weight yarn to start with. Well, then I was in Walmart, and now I got that like almost probably seven, eight months ago. Um, we'll look when we pull it out because I, I know I wrote on the skeins. Well, just a couple months ago in Walmart, probably back in early February before COVID really hit, I was in Walmart and the same type of yarn, I found these other colors that will just be beautiful with it and make it pop. So I'm definitely probably going to make baskets out of it or I'm going to make a blanket out of it. But um, so again, I think the yarn finds me. Like I see it and I become inspired. Like that's what I have to do to make a blanket. I mean, I could honestly, there's so many. Um, I don't know that I can get to them. Like even, let's see if I can bring you up here. Uh, let's see if I can get over there. I don't know if you can really see it, but right here, that kind of purple and blue skein of the Burnett Baby, there are two cakes right there. And I found those cakes on sale, but they were the only ones. So then I got that Burnett baby and said, well, I'll just combine them all together to make a baby blanket. So again, I feel like the yarn finds me and then I come up with a project. Here's another one. I've never used this yarn before. It says, go for Fox. And I'm assuming I'm praying I say that right. But it's a Lion brand. And it's 100% polyester. It is a 
six super bulky so that is the strand there and it's so soft like honestly when I first got this I was thinking how cool this would be if I made like using this my labels coming off Bernat baby coordinates how pretty that would be is like a border around the blanket and then it's so soft but I wanted I want to see how it feels to work with it and how easy it is but you guys that would make a, that that type of yarn would make a beautiful beautiful teddy bear and you know with a grandbaby on the way I would love to make a teddy bear so I think I'm still gonna try it as a blanket border first just to kind of get familiar with it and see how it works and how easy it is to work with but if it's very easy then oh my gosh I may seriously try to make a teddy bear out of this so again back to our question um, do you choose the yarn or the project first so for me I think without a doubt I choose the yarn and then the project the only time that the project has come first is like the hoodie when my son asked and I asked him what color he wanted and the same thing with my kids I went in there intentionally looking for the yarn colors that they asked for but other than that, really, as a given, or if my husband says, hey, I want a blanket and I want it in these colors, I think the yarn comes first. And then it's like, that's what I want to make with it. So, so let me know. Do you choose the yarn first or the project first? So, all right. Moving along. And Fun Day Monday. So this past week, we did finish making the DS Coop hats. And again, that was a fun project. And this coming week, we are actually doing tutorials. Uh, I'm trying to get my hats. And we are calling it Party in a Hat. And so it is really mostly all double crochet um, at the very bottom here after you make the base here of single crochets in the back loops only. It starts out with a couple single crochets, but the body of it is mostly double crochets and it's just a double crochet in every stitch. And then at the top here, we do have a little bit of single crochets and then a pom-pom added on. And this yarn here that I used as the brim, and at the very, very top of this hat is the same yarn that I used to make the DS Coop hat like this. So it's a very pretty yarn. But So the hats for this Friday that we're making are called Party in a Hat. And so it's a very easy, simple, simple pattern. So I hope you'll join us for that. All right, and Wednesday on the hook, we did finish the baby hat and booties, and we are now working on the baby sweater. And just a quick reminder, let me show you a picture. That is what we're working on. So, so I hope you'll continue to join us for that. And we'll be finishing up that baby sweater uh, this week. Joy basket moments. Um, again, I apologize. It's been a really crazy busy week. So I don't really um, have a specific scripture for you. But with everything going on from Dora Beth's back hurting to this thing with COVID and here in Newberry, where I live, I mean, it's just getting worse. You know, um, my state is now up to 
I think there was a period in a 24 hour period, we had like 300 and something new cases. Here in Newberry, we're up to like 63 or 65 confirmed cases. So um, I just got through having to, for two weeks, do my temperature twice daily and turn it into the hospital because I had become exposed to COVID when um, working with an OB patient. And so with all of that, I think for today, the verse that I'm going to give you is Hebrews 13, 8. And it's just a reminder that no matter what we're going through, that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow forever. And so just remember that he's with us and he's walking with us. And there's nothing that we can encounter that he has either not endured, not planned, doesn't know about. He is fully equipped and fully prepared to get us through. So we are definitely not alone. And so our love shares for this week, I have quite a few. Um, let's see. A lot of these people, I'm not really sure what their channel is about. So when I give you your personal shout out, um, please be sure and, you know, leave a comment. Let, let me know what your channel is about so I can give you a better, you know, woohoo. <laughs> um, I do apologize that there's nothing fancy in getting your name out this week. I am kind of in a crunch time with this video, trying to get it out and lacking in sleep and just a lot on my plate. So, um, Nonetheless, know that I truly appreciate you, and again, if you will share a little bit with me more about what your channel is about, then I'll give you a better and more proper shout out next Friday. So I have um, someone called Drusy, and everyone's links will be in, in the description box below. And Drusy is D-R-U-C-Y. Crochet Society subscribed to my channel this week, so I am excited about that because I absolutely love and adore them and everything that their boxes stand for. Um, IZ, just the letter I and the letter Z. Queen's Life, and I'm sure I'm going to mess this up, and if I do, I apologize. Zirglint007. Z H I R G L I N T 007. True Knot Crochet. Blondie. And I've listed Crochet Society twice, but I know that there is someone else. So I will give you a shout out next week. Again, I truly apologize that I'm not quite as organized as I normally am. Well, that wraps us up for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hear the church chimes going off. I live right behind two churches. And so one of them has bells that play every hour starting at eight o'clock in the morning. And I think they stop at either eight or nine o'clock at night, but on the hour, every hour they play a bell chime and then they gong for however many, you know, hours it is. And then sometimes they'll play like a couple of hymnal music afterwards and I can hear them going off. So I don't know if you can hear them. So it's actually letting me know right now at this current moment, it is 10 o'clock on Friday morning. So I am literally doing this video in crunch time. So be gentle with me this week. It is my fault. No internet, no um, computer issues. It is just simply me being a little bit behind the time um, this week. But I do hope that you have enjoyed all the videos I have put out. I do plan on doing another um, yarn wall voyage this coming week. I do plan on um, getting another video out there showing a couple more of the makes that I have made over 
um, the last couple months or year and then continue with all of our videos for Funday Monday and Wednesday on the hook. So I love you guys. I'm so sorry I'm tired today and that this has not been the best of our, our videos, but um, hang in there with me and forgive me for the lack of joy. I mean, I'm happy. Don't get me wrong. I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. It's, it's like I said, it's been a long week. And so I don't feel my normal self and I'm sure that it shows with you guys and I apologize for the lack of organization this week, but thanks for being my friends. Thanks for hanging in here with me today. I love you guys. Be joyful. Stay crafty in your own way and make your own joyful creations and email me or tweet me or Instagram me or Facebook me some pictures of some things you're working on because I'd really, really love to share them with everyone. So take care, guys. Bye.